Hello my friends, we're picking over where we left off in the last video that you saw from me, which I think went up on Thursday. This is going to be part two of that Hermes Q&A, busting all the popular Hermes myth out there. So if you'd like to continue chatting about anything and everything Hermes, then please be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. How do you feel about Hermes watches? Which is a question that does come up every now and again. I think Hermes watches are beautiful. I know that they're incredibly proud of the fact that they create their mechanisms in-house. If you ask someone at Hermes, they will be able to give you the entire story and history of their watchmaking, which really honestly, I don't care about that much. Personally, I view Hermes watches as a glorified bracelets so if you love the way they look they're worth the money but personally i would not spend the kind of money that they charge for these pieces i would much rather put that money towards an actual watch something maybe from rolex or attack not necessarily something from hermes they definitely have some pieces that i like the look and the idea of but in my humble opinion they are just simply not worth the price what do you think about the hac though? or also known as the AJC backpack. It's a piece that I talked about recently. I think it was in my video talking about bags that I turned down recently. It's a bag that was offered to me a few months ago at this point, and I immediately turned it down. I do like the idea of an AJC backpack, even though the AJC is not really a bag that I like in any one of the sizes, but I do think that if there was a way to make it work, it would be in the form of a backpack, but I don't understand why they only gave the AJC backpack a single strap instead of giving it two, as they did previously with the Kelly backpack. Well, I kind of just answered my own question. They probably didn't want to make it look too similar to the Kelly backpack, so they decided to just give the AJC Ado one single strap, which I personally didn't find flattering. But if you want to hear my more in-depth thoughts on the HEC backpack, I'll make sure to link that video of mine down below where I go a little bit more into depth about my thoughts on this particular piece. Oh, interesting, the same person asked about the Kelly Ado backpack. So I guess they're looking for a backpack and they asked, what's the difference between the Kelly Dance 2 and the Kelly Ado backpack? So the Kelly Dance 2 is one of my least favorite RMS pieces, I have to be honest with you. I do not understand the proportions of that bag. It is so incredibly strange, but the idea behind that bag is that you get this long strap that you can twist and turn to make it into a thousand different things. So you can use the bag on its own as a pochette, you can turn it into a crossbody bag, you can turn it into a belt bag, you can make it into a backpack if you wanted to, which I get. I love the idea of these multifunctional pieces, but they rarely, if ever, work. And when it comes to the Kelly Dons, I definitely don't think it does. I think it's one of those pieces that is a jack of all trades and a master of none. It's trying to do so many different things at the same time that it's not able to do one thing well. So for me, the Kelly Dons is definitely not a bag that I would recommend that you add to your collection. And obviously the, the biggest difference is the size, the shape, and the fact that the Kelly Auto backpack is a dedicated backpack, you cannot remove the shoulder straps, which is actually a bag that I really like. I personally toyed with the idea of picking it up myself, but unfortunately it was just way too narrow and small for me. It is quite a small backpack. So there is a big difference between the two. And if you're wondering which one I personally prefer, I do think that the Kelly backpack is a much more refined design. Next up, I love your videos. Would you recommend the rose gold gallop ring with a diamond? Thank you so much and thank you so much for watching. It's always hard for me to comprehend that people actually watch my videos because I'm sitting here talking to a wall, literally a wall. So it's hard for me to understand that people actually watch these videos because it's just so... I My brain doesn't really make the connection. So... I'm really glad that you enjoy my videos and thank you for watching. And would I recommend the rose gold gallop ring? Yes, I 1000% would. It's by far one of my most favorite pieces by Hermes. If I could only keep one piece of jewelry from Hermes, this would be it because I don't keep jewelry at home. And whenever I have this at home, 
I never feel like I'm missing out because this is just such a beautiful, refined yet subtle piece. You would not be able to tell that this is from Hermes if you were not in the know, yet it's a piece that is so often complimented that if you're going to start your Hermes jewelry collection, I would definitely point you in the direction of the Caleb range. Moving on to the next question, how hard is it to get a Caleb pochette compared to a mini? So I do have a dedicated video comparing the mini Kelly and the Kelly pochette side by side. And I do think that I touch on this in that video of mine. And I remember doing the math, I actually sat down and wrote down exactly how many Kelly pochettes I was offered and how many mini Kelly's I was offered in the exact same period of time, which in my experience, the mini Kelly is slightly less difficult to get than a Kelly pochette if you already have a relationship and a great rapport with the brand. Just, I can only talk about my first hand experience, which is that in four or five years, I was offered maybe five or six mini Kellys. I bought three of those and I was only ever offered two Kelly pochettes, one in exotic skin and then one in Swift, which I ended up buying, which leads me to believe that Kelly pochettes are slightly more difficult to get. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Perhaps it's because the Kelly pochette is slightly cheaper, so Hermes produces less of them, or that the mini Kelly has been so popular that they decided to put the Kelly pochette on the back burner. I'm not exactly sure, but in my personal first-hand experience, the Kelly pochette is a lot more difficult to get than a mini Kelly. Sorry if you guys can hear the baby in the background. He's playing with his new chew toy. So if you can hear the noise, I apologize, but the show must go on. And our next question is, I ordered a special order Birkin. Congratulations. How long do I have to wait now? I personally don't know if there is really a method to the madness. It Depending on who you ask, everyone will have a theory. Some people will say that if you order a seasonal color, it will get to you much quicker than if you order a neutral or a classic shade. Some people will say that if you order a smaller bag, it's going to take less time than if you order a larger bag. But depending on who you speak to, everyone will have these theories. But if you compare them, there isn't a system that you can set up behind them none of them really make sense. So it really depends. Sometimes Hermes can surprise you. When I placed my special order back, I remember it took me maybe five or six months, definitely not longer than that. But I also know people who have been waiting for their special order bags for a couple of years now. And then if you place yours in exotic skin, don't be surprised if your bag doesn't come in for at least a few years. But if you place the request for a bag in regular skin, I would say that it's most likely going to be somewhere between six months to maybe a year, but don't hold me to it. Higher ticket purchases or larger quantity, but small ticket pieces to get a quota bag. I wish I had an answer for you, but I just personally don't believe in strategizing. I am not someone who will tell you to buy this or that or to buy a certain amount of homeware pieces or a certain amount of fine jewelry to get your dream bag. I would just say that buy whatever you like and whenever you like it, don't worry about how much you're spending or what you're spending on. At the end of the day, it's not going to make that big of a difference. Now, I'm not saying that if you've only ever purchased a single lipstick, it's going to be as easy for you to get a bag as it is for someone who furnished their entire home with their mask. But what I'm trying to say is that if there's something you like and you don't mind adding to your collection, pick it up right there and then and don't worry about how it's going to look on your profile because I can guarantee that you approach it with this strategic thinking and you're thinking I should buy this, a certain amount of this and that, you're going to resent the brand in the end and you'll end up with pieces that you don't truly really love. So I don't really think that it makes that big of a difference how you spend the money that you're going to spend with Hermes because it really comes down to your relationship. So as long as you're buying pieces that you truly love, you get to explore a wide range of the brand and you get to know not only the brand itself, but also your advisor. I really don't think what you buy makes that big of a difference. Thoughts on box leather, which is a leather that I have to admit has grown on me. It took quite a while, but at this point, it's a leather that I love. 
And I have to be honest with you at the beginning, it wasn't a leather that I hated for no reason, just the fact that it is so delicate, it's so finicky, it develops this thing called patina. They were all things that I am just not a fan of. I'm extremely careful with all of my bags and I want them to remain in great shape. But when it comes to box, even though it is a beautiful hard wearing structured leather, you can really easily scratch it and mark it, which are things that I tend to obsess over. So I never felt like that it was a leather that would work for me. And it wasn't that I just blind hated it. I did buy a piece, a Kelly wallet in box leather to test the waters and I could tell that it wasn't a leather that I was going to like, but then I ended up getting my Constance 18 in box, which has changed everything. It quickly became one of my most loved and most used bags. And then a few months later, I ended up getting my Kelly 25 in box, which the leather I love. It is really the size that I'm having issues with, but I have to say that it is a gorgeous leather. It is one that you have to get used to. The idea of being worn and lived in it is going to live a life and it's going to tell people that so if you don't mind those little details it is a leather that is absolutely beautiful and there is nothing quite like it when it comes to handling a piece that's made of box but if you would like a leather that doesn't show signs of tear and wear i would definitely point you in the direction of grain skins rather than some of these beautiful but quite finicky heritage leathers. If you had to choose only one scarf, which size is better? So when it comes to Hermes scarves, it all depends on the material that it's made of. So when it comes to silk scarves, I would definitely go for a scarf 90, which I think is one of the most multifaceted scarves that you can style in a hundred different ways. I personally wouldn't wear a silk scarf, but I still have a way of using them which I use as display pieces. It's something that I have talked about before, but I do have the scarf hanging system from Hermes, which is what they use in their boutiques to display these incredible pieces of art. And then when it comes to cashmere scarves, I would just go for their traditional, I think they call it a muffler, which you can buy in either two tone or a single tone, which is just a great classic that you honestly cannot go wrong with. Can you tell us about the long strap that you had made for your mini Kelly? Yes, of course. So if you haven't been with me for that long, I think I ordered a strap. Has it been two years? No, I don't think it's been that long. Maybe a year, a year and a half that I've had that strap. So long story short, it's something that I had done before even this strap, but I ordered a longer strap for my mini Kelly because the original strap is 85 centimeters, which I can technically use as a crossbody strap, but it's not the most comfortable or the most flattering personally on me. So Hermes does give you the option to order a longer strap for any one of your Kelly bags. It's technically considered a replacement service. So you go through the exact same steps if you let's say have a Birkin or a Kelly bag that comes with a clochette that you lost or you misplaced and you need a new one. You have to fill out a really similar form. So basically you just go back to the boutique where you purchased your bag either with a physical piece or with a proof of purchase. And then based on those, they can place an order on your behalf, which can take anywhere between six months to a few years, depending on what you're ordering, what leather you're ordering it in, and the length and all these little details, basically what Hermes has available, I assume. But it is something that you're going to be responsible paying for. So my strap, I ordered a 105 strap, which means that it measures 105 centimeters so it's about 20 centimeters longer than the original strap and then there's an even longer strap than that which measures 120 centimeters which is incredibly long so unless you like your back hanging really low or you're really tall i would probably suggest that you get the 105 strap but it is something that i was able to order it cost me i think I think it was around 600 euros when I bought it in Epsom and I was technically sent the wrong strap because they accidentally made me a strap that belongs to the original Mini Kelly, not the Mini Kelly 22 that I own, which I'm not complaining about because it's a little bit thicker and I like that the hook is a little bit more intricate than the hook that comes with the current Mini Kelly, but 
It's something that I am incredibly grateful for because it was truly life-changing getting a longer strap. It makes it so much more comfortable to carry my mini Kelly Cross body, which is what I've always done, except I always had to come up with a trick to make the strap a little bit longer. But if you are someone who always carries their mini Kelly Cross body and you're struggling with the strap, I would just say pull the trigger, order the strap, and I don't think you will regret it. Yes, it will cost a pretty penny, but it will be so worth it. Now, I did receive a couple of questions, not this time, but previously about ordering a strap in a different color or in a different leather, which you cannot do. You need to have either the bag physically with you when you're ordering the strap, or you have to take um, a proof of purchase with you. So they'll only be able to order a strap in the color and in the leather that the bag is originally made of. And why don't we end this video on another question about the special order experience, which is that it's my birthday next month. How can I ask about a special order bag? Well, first of all, happy birthday in advance. And I would just approach it the same way as I would approach asking for any other bag simply ask and if you feel too nervous asking for a bag which you shouldn't but i understand that it can be quite intimidating i would approach it by asking about the entire process because at the end of the day it is your advisor that is the true expert on the topic so just ask them questions like how often does your boutique do special order how many special orders do they usually give out each season what kind of bags are you allowed to order? What kind of leathers are usually being offered? Not all boutiques will have the exact same list of leathers that are available. Some boutiques will allow you to place a request for bags in exotic skins while others won't. And then once you have received all this background information, you can ask your advisor's advice on how they would suggest that you go about asking for one of these or if you could even be considered for one based on your experience with the brand because it's ideal to have a little bit of an understanding of what you love and what you dislike when it comes to RMS bags before placing a request for a special order bag. You don't want it to be your first, your second, or probably even your third bag because you might not have the best idea for what you truly want to emphasize on a bag that is being specifically made for you. But if you have a great rapport with the brand, if you have shopped with the same person and the same boutique, I'm sure it's going to be an incredibly informative conversation. And that's really the way that I would go about. And my friends, this brings us to the end of today's video. I would say that these are all the questions that I had time for, but that's not the case. These are all the questions that the baby had time for because he's getting a little restless. So I think I should take him down, but I really appreciate you guys being here and watching. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did and you'd like to see more videos like this from me, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down, down below if you haven't done so yet. And if you'd like to participate in future Q and A's, make sure you follow me on Instagram. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. And I hope to see you back here with a new video really, really soon.